Please rise. May the God of hope fill you with complete joy and peace as you continue to believe so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here again, words written for us in Matthew chapter 25. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he answered, Amen, I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. You may be seated. My fellow redeemed. Our society suffers from a condition called FOMO. At least that's what the kids call it, or I think they used to at least. That is, fear of missing out. All advertising preys on this fear. Only in limited supply. Try our new product, our new flavor, our new design, our newest technology. Better than ever. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more. Do you suffer from, fill in your condition, then ask your doctor about, fill in your medication. Web pages, social media, all those streaming services, they rely on this fear to keep you scrolling more and more and lower and lower because you might just miss something down the page. Fear of missing out dominates our lives. Because we fear our kids might miss out, we have cut recess and added all sorts of other types of classes, and not all of them are bad. Many of them, we would say, those are good things, technology and languages and gardening, even meditation. And then, to fill in, we pack their schedules with extracurriculars so that they don't have any time for themselves. Fathers and mothers work themselves to exhaustions, trying to make sure that they, miss, they won't miss out on any opportunity, vacation, or a nicer home, or a newer car, so that their kids might have a better life. Universities have driven many into debt because they promise they make a promise that no one wants to miss out on the promise of a better life. When marriages get hard, people are quick to throw them away because they fear they might miss out on their chance of happiness. We spend, we sacrifice our time, we exhaust our energy, our minds are constantly in a frenzy because we are afraid we might just miss out out. Today Jesus warns us about the real danger of missing out. And not a few good things in this earthly life, but the eternal joys of life with him. But instead of fear, Jesus encourages us, keep your lamp burning until he comes. With your container full of oil, you will join that joyful banquet. They were so excited. They were looking forward to this day. Today their loved one, their friend, was going to meet her groom. She was going to join her groom and they would start their lives together after all those months of planning. He had finally prepared their home. It was time for them to join together. Tonight was the night and the bridegroom was on his way. The ten virgins, we would probably call them bridesmaids, went out to meet him and in joyful procession they would all go to the celebration. Five were foolish and five were wise. Only one thing distinguishes one from the other. The foolish didn't bring any extra oil to keep their lamps burning. The wise did. They kept a little oil in a jar. 
The bridegroom was delayed. The night weared on. Their eyes grew weary. Their heads began to bob. Soon they all, all ten, they all fell asleep. They awoke with that sudden shot of adrenaline. The cry went up, the bridegroom is near, he's coming. They jumped up, dusted themselves off, maybe straightened out their hair and their clothes. They trimmed their lamps and started to light them. Five of those lamps would not stay alight. No oil. They cried, cried out in horror. They couldn't meet the groom like that. Give us some of your oil, they cried. But there wasn't enough to share. What good would it do if all ten lamps were dark? No. You'll have to go buy some from the sellers of oil. We cannot share with you. But while they were gone, the groom arrives. The parade proceeds. The wedding feast commences and the door is shut. And when those foolish virgins arrive to join in, the groom speaks those horrible words. I do not know you. The door remains shut. They missed out. Jesus doesn't tell us why those five foolish virgins forgot their oil. But the why doesn't matter. When the groom arrived, they weren't ready, and therefore they missed out. They missed out, but not simply because they ran out of oil, because they didn't bring extra oil. They ran, the groom wasn't checking to see if they had oil along with them. They, ran, they were kept out, they missed out, because their lamps were not burning. Like a flashlight with no batteries or dead ones. Like a car without gas. Like a wood stove with no wood. Lamps don't burn without oil. So to take Jesus' words to heart, we know, need to know first, what is that flame? And second, what is that oil which will keep that fire burning? So that we too won't miss out. Well, the wise virgins who have their lamps burning, who have that flame still, they get to go into the wedding banquet. And we know the wedding is a picture of heaven that Christ has invited us to. And so we can figure out what the lighted lamp is. Jesus says, whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. When the jailer asked the apostle, what must I do to be saved? The apostle answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your whole household. In Revelation, Jesus told his churches, Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. What is that lamp burning but faith, the light which leads the soul and brightens God's grace for us and fills us with the confidence, the faith that looks at Christ and trusts in all that he has done. What is that light? But the Spirit who creates that faith and sustains that faith, for no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He's the one who keeps it, makes it flourish with its fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, so that people, like they may see a lamp, may see those who believe, they see the light of faith in our deeds. The Apostle Paul warns, do not put out the Spirit's fire. That is, keep the faith. Keep the faith burning and showing itself in godly love. So if the lamp and its flame are faith, then the oil which keeps that faith burning can only be the means of grace. Faith comes from hearing the message. Paul teaches and Jesus commands, go and make disciples of all nations by baptizing them and teaching them. St. Peter declared on Pentecost, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And later he writes to the churches, baptism now saves you. The Lord institutes his holy sacrament. 
by saying that this body and blood are for the forgiveness of your sins. These are the means of grace for you and for your faith. This word calls you out of darkness and unbelief to unbelief and sin to repentance and faith. God's promises spark that trust and confidence of faith, that promise of the gospel works its way into your heart. The promise God has given in the waters of baptism, the promise you eat and drink when you receive his body and blood, these are all for you, for your faith, to keep it always burning brightly so that you will not miss out when the Lord comes and you will enter into that joyful banquet. He had almost half a tank of gas when they set out that day. He looked at a map and it didn't seem like the destination was all that far and surely there would be a gas station on the way, right? Well, it was a little bit further than he thought it was going to be and by the time they got there, the needle was already starting to edge frighteningly close to the wrong end of the gauge. There wasn't a gas station in sight. The return trip was nerve-wracking. Counting the miles and watching that needle edge further and further to the left, <sighs> that low fuel light came on just as they saw the most beautiful sight anyone has ever seen. Gas pumps. <sighs> that extra price per gallon was a joyful expense for a worthwhile lesson learned. When traveling in the middle of nowhere, fill her up when you can. Fill up when you can. That's good, good advice on any long journey. It's especially good advice, life-saving advice, when you don't know how far that adventure will take you or where your next fill will be. Fill up whenever you can. Take your oil with you while you wait. That's Jesus' message for you today. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Make sure there is oil in your jar. Fill up while you can. We Lutherans know the importance of this and we know it's important to start early, even from infancy. In infancy, we bring the children before the Lord and wash them in those waters of baptism and the Lord himself sparks faith with his promise attached to that water. Lutherans have always valued education. In fact, Martin Luther reinvented education with his small catechism, those questions and answers for parents, especially for fathers to teach to their children. They established schools, and Luther even had the audacity to say that girls too should learn in his schools because the faith is that important. From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, Paul told Timothy. And so today we have a long tradition of Lutheran schools, high schools, and colleges. We have Sunday schools, but we all know the most important thing for a child is for those parents to train them up in the word of the Lord, to fill them with that word at home, to sing your favorite hymns, to learn those Bible lessons, to memorize your catechism, to read family devotions together, to fill them up while you have them. They'll do just about anything to make sure that the kids don't miss out on their opportunity later in life. How much more so that they do not miss out on eternal life? God himself encourages us, train up the child in the way he will go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But we know kids don't stay kids forever. Eventually, parents can't force their children to church anymore. They can't force them to hear the word. And really, parents can never believe for their children. No one can force you to listen to the word. 
No one is going to drag you to the service or demand that you approach the Lord's table. No one will set aside your time so that you can read God's word as part of your daily routine. Too often we wonder, well, just how much oil is really enough? Like the person who wants to see how close they can get to empty before they have to fill up again. We see our time in the word as time that takes us away from everything else we have going in our life. We all know a communion Sunday is a long Sunday. Daily devotions aren't always interesting and life-changing and inspirational, nor are sermons always that exciting. The world grows less and less concerned. With setting aside Sunday as the day for you to get your Sabbath rest and to listen to the word, we get lazy. We get distracted. We get drowsy. We stop watching. We lose track of the miles to go on our journey. Remember I said it didn't matter why those foolish virgins forgot to bring the oil. So also, it doesn't matter what takes us away from the means of grace, away from the word. The question Jesus asks you today is this, will your lamp burning be burning when the call goes out? Look, he is near. Is your faith well fed? Is your wick trimmed with repentance? Is your container full of oil? Will the moment of his coming be a moment of joy or horror for you? Will you miss out? No one can believe for you. No one can share their preparations with you. He will come. Are you ready? Jesus certainly spoke these words to snap us out of our complacency and to call us to repentance for our indifference, but these words are also for our encouragement and for our comfort. While he calls those virgins foolish who didn't bother to bring any extra oil, so also he calls them wise who do. He calls those wise who gladly hear the word and faithfully receive the sacrament, even though they too fall asleep, even though they don't have the stamina to stay up and watch all those long hours of the night, they are called ready. They don't need to rush out to buy anything or get anything more. They join the joyful procession. The groom welcomes them to the rich banquet. They are part of the celebration. They don't miss out. You know, we eat almost every day. I'm guessing most of us probably eat multiple times a day. We need to eat. The food we eat provides the energy and nutrition our bodies need to not even just survive, but then also to thrive. But even the Olympic athlete or the, a swimmer, a marathon runner, even those who have the most strenuous jobs that burn the most calories, they don't eat all the time. Even the most dedicated eaters, who maybe store a little extra for later, still work, play, sleep. They live their lives. We need to eat. We need to replenish and fill our jars with oil. Our hearts need to be fed with the word. Our lamp needs to be well supplied. Jesus tells us to keep watch. But lest these words fill you with fear, what about when I am sleeping or working or playing games? What about when life and work seem to consume me and I get lost at the task in hand? I can't always be pondering deep and meaningful thoughts about the Almighty God. What about those times when I've forgotten? When I fall asleep without a prayer in my heart? When I awake late and my Bible doesn't get opened that day? Do I need to be afraid of missing out? Lest these, worries, let the, lest these fears worry us, remember who it is who has called you, who it is who feeds you, 
who satis- it is the one who has satisfied the multitudes with a few loaves and fish. Remember who it is who has sparked your faith, who has fed your faith, who has sustained it and maintained it through all these years, the spirits of power who proceeds from the Father and the Son. God has made his dwelling within you, and he will not so easily leave it. His word is indeed good food. It is fine oil. It will not be so quickly depleted. Place your confidence in Christ, who promises that no one will snatch you out of his hand. Even when you are tired, even when life is busy and time-consuming, even when time should come and the word grows scarce, even should we be forbidden to hear the word. Your jar will be full through all the long night of waiting, even should we grow old and forget even ourselves. The Lord, he will not forget us. He keeps your faith burning. Listen to the word, and your jar will be full all through the long night. And when that call arises, the Lord, he approaches. Your hearts will truly burn with joy, and we will join that joyful procession to the wedding feast. I think fear of missing out has surely intensified this year. Vacations, school, work, time with our family, memories with our friends, all have been set aside. Who doesn't feel like they are missing out on something? Of course, we are. At the same time, maybe this year will be a little bit of a cure for FOMO. Maybe the things we chase after and so often fear, like we are missing out on something truly important, won't seem so important after all. Maybe we will see the things that will satisfy us the most can't be purchased on Amazon. Perhaps we can now see what happens to our hearts and minds in a world which is missing out on what really matters on Christ and his promises. Perhaps some are already waking up and finding out that, yes, death is near and death does come for us all. And many are finding that their jars just might be empty and their hearts are unprepared. We, however, have nothing to fear. We have the answer, the comfort that worried hearts need. Now more than ever, we need that precious oil of the word to keep our light of faith burning. My friends, you don't need to fear missing out. God has prepared for you all good things. Therefore, keep watch. Keep waiting. That joyful call will come, and you will join the Lord in the feast that will never end. Amen. Please rise. Now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join now in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father,